This is the Music History Today podcast for October 14th. On today's show, Pearl Jam breaks a record, JoJo finally gets to release a record, and Pulp Fiction breathes life into older music. First up, though, on this date in 1906, a legendary entertainer and civil rights activist, Paul Robeson, was not allowed to play for the Rutgers University football team because their opponents that day, Washington and Lee University, refused to play against a team that had a black person on it. In 1939, music company BMI started operations. In 1954, the musical movie White Christmas premiered. In 1964, Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones married his wife, Shirley Shepard. In 1966, Grace Slick first appeared with Jefferson Airplane. In 1968, the Beatles finished work on the White Album. In 1971, John Lennon and Yoko Ono appeared on The Dick Cavett Show. In 1994, the movie Pulp Fiction premiered. From a musical standpoint, the movie helped to revive interest in Dick Dale's music. He did the song Miserloo, the song with the crazy surf guitar and the screaming in the beginning of it. It also sparked interest in the early Cool in the Gang funk classic Jungle Boogie and also Link Ray's classic hit Rumble. In 2000, Pearl Jam broke a record on Billboard's Albums Chart when five of their released live albums from their European tour hit the chart in the same week. In 2006, Rascal Flatts' opening act, Eric Church, was kicked off the tour after he repeatedly played over his allotted opening slot time. Apparently, that was the last straw for Rascal Flatts, who replaced him with some hotshot country newcomer at the time called, let me check my notes here, Taylor Swift. Huh. Wonder what ever happened to her. Well, I hope she ended up okay. Anywho, in 2006, singer Melina Leon married her husband, Ree Fernando Delgado. In 2014, singer Kesha started her lawsuit against producer Dr. Luke in order to be released from her contract with him. In 2017, country music singer Casey Musgraves married singer-songwriter Rustin Kelly. In 2018, Steppenwolf performed in Baxter Springs, Kansas, which was their final show. And in 2023, Madonna started her celebration tour after having to delay it to deal with a bacterial infection that sent her to the hospital. And yes, we all know what happened to Taylor Swift. That was sarcasm, people, just so you know. In classical music, in 1924, the opera Die Glücklich Hand premiered, and in 1956, the overture Robert Browning by Charles Ives premiered. In theater, in 1930, the Gershwin musical Girl Crazy premiered on Broadway and made stars out of Ginger Rogers and especially Ethel Merman. And in 1961, the Frank Loesser musical How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying premiered on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on October 14th in 1970, Merle Haggard was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 1974, Charlie Rich was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 1985, Ricky Skaggs was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 2009, opera superstar Placido Domingo received the first Burgett Nelson Million Dollar Prize. In 2020, Post Malone and Billie Eilish were among the big winners at the Billboard Music Awards, and in 2022, Jefferson Airplane finally received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Albums that were released on October 14th include in 1968 when Tyrannosaurus Rex, better known these days as T-Rex, released Prophets, Seers, and Sages, The Angels of the Ages. In 1969, Elvis Presley released From Memphis to Vegas, From Vegas to Memphis. In 1974, Jethro Tull released War Child. In 1977, David Bowie released Heroes. Ultravox released Ha Ha Ha. And Kiss released Kiss Alive 2. In 1980, Earth, Wind & Fire released Faces. In 1981, Prince released Controversy. In 1982, Zap released Zap 2. In 1983, Cyndi Lauper released her classic, She's So Unusual. The Jam released Snap. Nelton John released Too Low for Zero. In 1985, ABC released How to Be a Zillionaire. 
Iron Maiden released Live After Death. Depeche Mode released Depeche Mode's The Singles, 81 to 85. And In Excess released their popular album, Listen Like Thieves. In 1986, Wang Chung released Mosaic. In 1987, Billy Joel released Cahomped. Frank Zappa released Broadway the Hard Way in 1988. In 1991, Belinda Carlisle released Live Your Life, Be Free. And Kylie Minogue released Let's Get To It. In 1994, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant released No Quarter, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant Unleaded, which was their live album that they did for MTV Unleaded. In 1997, Duran Duran released Medazzaland, and Yes released Something's Coming, the BBC recordings of 1969 to 1970. In 2002, Ace of Bass released The Golden Ratio. In 2003, Barbra Streisand released the movie album. Mariah Carey released the remixes. Rod Stewart released As Time Goes By, The Great American Songbook 2. And ZZ Top released Chrome Smoke and Barbecue, the ZZ Top box set. In 2008, the Charlie Daniels Band released Uneasy Rider. And Lucinda Williams released Little Honey. In 2011, the Scorpions released Live 2011, Get Your Stingin' Blackout. In 2013, Cilla Black released the very best of Cilla Black, and Boardwalk released their self-titled album. In 2014, the Blues Magoos released Psychedelic Resurrection, and Bob Seger released Ride Out. And in 2016, singer JoJo was finally able to release her first album in almost a decade after not being able to because of a fight with her record label. Singles that were released in the UK on October 14th include in 1957 when Elvis Presley released Jailhouse Rock. In 1966, the Easy Beats released Friday on My Mind and the Monkees released The Last Train to Clarksville. In 1977, Elvis Costello released Watching the Detectives and Queen released We Are the Champions. And in 1991, U2 released The Fly. Meanwhile, in America, in 1963, the Marvelettes released As Long As I Know He's Mine. In 1964, the Marvelettes were at it again, this time releasing Too Many Fish in the Sea. In 1997, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas released Honey Child. In 1969, Diana Ross and the Supremes released Someday We'll Be Together, and B.J. Thomas released Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid movie. In 1972, the Osmonds released Crazy Horses. In 1974, Jethro Tull released Bungle in the Jungle. And the Jay Giles Band released Muscle Got Lost, somewhere down the line. In 1975, Kiss released the live version of Rock and Roll All Night. In 1985, The Cars released Tonight She Comes. And Dire Straits released Brothers in Arms. In 2015, g Easy released Me, Myself, and I. And in 2016, Max Schneider released Lights Down Low and Machine Gun Kelly and Camila Cabello released Bad Things. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 14th include Usher, also Natalie Maines of the Chicks, singer Thomas Dolby, singer Karen White, rapper George Floyd of the rap group Screwed Up Click. Yes, that George Floyd. A.J. Perro of Twisted Sister, singer Cliff Richard, Billy Harrison of Them, Dan McCafferty of Nazareth, soul singer and saxophonist Robert Parker, Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues, Shazney Lewis of All Saints, Marcia Barrett of Boney M, Colin Hodgkinson of Whitesnake, country music singer Melba Montgomery, composer Alexander Von Zemlinski, Shaggy Too Dope of Insane Clown Posse, Chris Amu of The Real Thing, rapper Lil Double XL, singer and fashion designer Lourdes Ciccone Leon, 
better known as Madonna's first child. Also, Brian Breeding of B5. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 14th include composer Jacques, who passed away in 1568 at the age of 61. Composer Antonio Sesti passed away in 1669 at the age of 46. Composer Franz Brixey passed away in 1771 at the age of 39. Composer William Rook passed away in 1847 at the age of 53. Composer Ignacy Komarowski passed away from tuberculosis in 1857 at the age of 33. Composer Sandor Urkel passed away in 1900 at the age of 54. Composer Gottfried Madison Hansen passed away in 1909 at the age of 76. Composer George Whiting passed away in 1923 at the age of 83. Composer Nathaniel passed away in 1957 at the age of 78. Composer Jean Pauvet passed away in 1958 at the age of 82. Composer Arkady Dubensky passed away in 1966 at the age of 75. Composer Joseph Kaminsky passed away in 1972 at the age of 68. Entertainer extraordinaire Mr. Bing Crosby passed away in 1977 at the age of 74. Guitarist Oscar Alleman passed away in 1980 at the age of 71. Composer Rudolfo Helfter passed away in 1987 at the age of 86. Legendary composer and conductor Leonard Bernstein passed away in 1990 at the age of 72. Violinist Gioconda DeVito passed away in 1994 at the age of 87. Glenn Buxton of the Alice Cooper Band passed away from pneumonia in 1997 at the age of 49. Musician Frankie Yankovic passed away in 1998 at the age of 83, and no, he is not Weird Al Yankovic's father. No relation to Weird Al. Moon Records founder Cordell Jackson passed away in 2004 at the age of 81. Bass player Jared Anderson passed away in 2006 at the age of 31. Singer Freddie Fender passed away from cancer in 2006 at the age of 69. Rapper Big Mo of the Screwed Up Click passed away from heart issues in 2007 at the age of 33. Chuck Ruff of the Edgar Winter Group passed away in 2011 at the age of 60. Pianist Ike Owens passed away in 2014 at the age of 39. Singer Salim Majid of Iqlim passed away in a motorcycle accident in 2018 at the age of 57. K-pop singer Sully passed away from mental health issues in 2019 at the age of 25. Lyricist Herbert Kretzmer passed away in 2020 at the age of 95. Touring and session bassist Steve York passed away in 2020 at the age of 72. And the woman nicknamed the Queen of Technicolor. Entertainer extraordinaire Miss Rhonda Fleming passed away in 2020 at the age of 97. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 15th, when in 2014, Chuck Berry played in public for the final time. 